the sunshine. And we just pray, Father, that you continue to, continue to smile upon us. Bless us as we move forward, leading this city in a direction that will be pleasing unto you. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Okay, tonight in the work session, we have uh, Mike Selka with us from Byrne, Butler, Capaluto, and Massey, the accountants, and he's here to give us the audit report ending September 30th, 2015. Okay, Mr. Selka. Do I have to say that? Yes, it'd be nice. Um, I want to thank y'all, Mayor, Council, for uh, allowing us to prepare the audit again this year. Um, Real big special thanks to Andy and Julie and all the administrative staff support team. They do a jam up job. It makes our life real easy. I know we've pestered them for three weeks. And even the guys at the back, they help a ton too. You really have a good crew. Um, Thank you. I want, to, I want to say special thanks for that. The current year audit report reflects an unqualified opinion, which is the highest opinion we can give as auditors. Um, that's two years in a row now. The next things look really good. Uh, biggest highlights for this fiscal year in, we re the, the city refinanced the bonds back in 2013. This was the first year we had pay down on them. We paid down 885. Um, the thing that got everybody, not, not just the city, but all cities, towns, counties, uh, we picked up almost 2.2 million in unfunded pension liability. And you, along with 99 other percent of all nationwide, has unfunded pension liability. Good thing about it, S and P didn't drop our bond rate, and that's that's amazing. It helped that in 14 and 15 we picked up a lot of infrastructure that had been put on the books in prior years, all the Cotton Lakes, uh, Platts, Crystal Creek, Eagle Creek, Cove. So it almost basically offset it, so it was no negative impact to the financial statements. Um, the other report that you have, the smaller one, this is the first time the city's been subject to the single audit rules since, I'm trying to remember, I think it was 2002. And what a single audit report is, is any time you receive and expend more than $500,000 of federal awards, you're required to have those federal awards separate audit, which is called single audit. It's mainly a compliance audit. In that, uh, we issued an unqualified opinion on that as well. Uh, the good thing about it, this, this fiscal year, they jumped it from 500 to 750,000. So even though you've been awarded it, you have to spend it. So it's quite possible we won't have to do that this coming fiscal year, up just all the um, There was no instances of non-compliance all of the federal awards were spent, <coughs> were supposed to be spent on. And that's basically all I have, unless anybody has any questions. You want to have any questions? When he, I forgot what the term was that you used, but when we picked up those other areas. Infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure. That's just streets, sewer, uh, sewer mains, or not sewer mains, but drainage. Stuff like that. And that increases our fixed assets. That's right. Fixed assets. So, so it's just like that is a fire good truck, a building, city center here. That is a good thing. Um, I, I think in this council uh, can be commended that um, we haven't had a complete turnaround since 08. Right. But we're coming back up, and uh, it's because of management. It's because of how we manage the funding here in the city, <clears throat> pay the bills, and provide what we need to provide uh, for the citizens, but uh, to get where we need to be financially. And as we continue to see the development and the growth coming into the city, then we will see our budget numbers keep going up. That's a good thing because uh, where we were in, in 2008, that uh, we were presented with a million two hundred fifty thousand dollar budget by the outgoing uh, council, and it was.
was no way that we could manage and get to ten million two hundred fifty thousand. <coughs> so we cut that, adjusted that budget back to about nine two, and were able to make budget during those years, and we have steadily inched up since then. Uh, once we get to the point of getting into a, an area where we're 13 or 14 million dollar budget, then it, they look at us totally different on a lot of different things, particularly when you go to the bond market. Uh, that to get those ratings that we want, and, and I think one of the things, Mike, uh, before was uh, when we were trying to get, I think we got a, a A rating, and we were attempting to get a double A rating, and we worked hard to get that double, to get the double A rating, and we were just a little bit short, because they questioned how do you manage what you have, how you doing what you're doing with the money that you have to work with. But that's the reason I congratulate the council on yes, all our budgeting and how we have, have gotten there. So if we ever get to the point that we're in that 13, uh, 13 to 14 million dollar range, they look at us totally different uh, within the market. And uh, what determines our borrowing power is the worth of the properties within the city. Uh, if you get a, a reduced uh, assessment on your properties, that's good, that's good. But as that drop down, also our borrowing power drops down also. So we have not exceeded, I think our borrowing limits are probably about 18 million somewhere in that range. We've never gotten close to exceeding that. I think at one time when we first came in, there was about a $13 million uh, issue that we had that we owed, and we were able to pay that down. Uh, and then since then, we've never been above 12. And now as we're paying the 12 million that we borrowed the last time to refinance and do the complex and the other projects that we're doing within the complex, uh, it has uh, uh, given us the ability to restore the finances here in the city. So it's all uh, uh, just a lot of mess that we go through, but it's, it's part of the program. It, it's, it's been accomplished for that way itself. Yeah, that, that's true. We still, we're the only city within the county that in, in the River Region that operates at an 8%, which means we get three cents on the dollar, the state gets the rest of it. But all of our sister cities and everybody around us, their tax rates are much higher than ours. Mm -hmm. So we have been able to operate still at that uh, three cents on the dollar. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, tonight under uh, new business uh, will be to accept the 2015 audit of funds for the city of Wichita ending September 30th, 2015, prepared by Burns Public Capital Resort and Massey. And then item two will be permission to purchase a quantity of 30 Motorola's R765 handsets dependent upon availability at $275 each for a total of $8,250 for the Southern Link wireless for the Tunka Police Department. And Jim, it is my understanding as we do these upgrades, all of this will be compatible with the new type system that may, may be one day entering into. Uh, this is actually a stop cap for the 765s for the upgrade. We have to have these to run the next 18 months. They're $750 normally, we're getting them for 265 for that reason and then we'll be able to trade them in for a credit when we have to buy the next generation of them. Right. Again, this technology, which I don't understand, but thank you for what you do. Can I ask yes. yes. And Jim, I don't know if you or the chief would be able to answer this, but would these radios be compatible with the fire department as well? Or 
the ones that we're talking yes. about purchasing now? They are. And then how does that work when it's time to trade them in? Will the fire department have a set or will we have to do that purchase at one time for the fire department and the police department to get everybody on the same frequency? How would that work? Nothing that we're buying now will be compatible with the Southern Link system that they're building that will start in about a year, 12 months to 18 months. Uh, but we have to have them to run right now because we're changing over to the Raven simulcast and all that. Um, fire department is actually sticking to their analog system, the tower system, for now. They're not going to use these. They're just going to stay with the, anal with the analog system. The police department will utilize their personal cell links, the smaller ones. These would be the one watt larger ones, and they'll have the analog system as a backup or redundancy backup. Fire department doesn't want to go this route. They, they're fine with the system they're using. They use a lot of the little pagers that uh, the volunteers get, and they don't want to buy a, a higher number of, of these radios for those, those volunteers. They're going to stick with what they have for now. But they will, I guess my ultimate concern, they will be able to communicate with Oh, fully. Regardless. Yeah, there's no, there won't be any problem there. And actually with the Raven simulcast, they'll be able to hear county as well. So that's an, actually an extra benefit. Okay, any other questions? Okay. All right, so we're entering into the, uh, to the uh, council meeting tonight. And uh, we'll do the invocation.